Welcome to that episode of Just More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Lacey. Hey. You can find us online at justmorefix.com and on Twitter at Just More Fix. If you like us, you can support us at Patreon and you can give us a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you find us at. In this episode, we're going to talk about awesome things to Google for inspiration. And now, it's time to get our gaming fix. Ely from the Starling Tribune, an Arrow TV show fan podcast, part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other amazing geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Welcome to that episode of Just More Fix. A few announcements here before we get things rolling. Hoosier Con, again, is coming up 20, March 22nd to 24th, so if you guys are going to be in the Indianapolis area, we'd love to come play some games with you and hang out and uh, get some gaming going on. And I mentioned before that my Troubadours events are both, I have two of them posted, they're both on Saturday. Uh, right now, though, there's only two seats open. So if you hop on there and go to the events, you can either search, tr- search Troubadours or Powered by the Apocalypse is the system that it's listed under, and it should come up. Uh, I'm running those on Saturday, and there are five seats in both, and the first game is completely full, and the second game uh, has two seats open. So if you're looking to come try out some Troubadours and get into some Shakespearean disaster and write some plays and have a good time, uh, come out and check it out. Hopefully we can see you there. Second thing is Zine Quest is finishing up now. So we're going to be shouting out some more Zine Quest um, projects that we found that we liked and are, are going to back because a few of them have continued to pop up as things have gone along. And there's just a ton of awesome projects that are out there. And we want to show them some Just One More Fix love because they're just really cool. We like promoting stuff that we like. You know, it's just awesome and cool. Was that it? Along those same li- or along with Hoosier Con, we are continue to do run our indie RPG days. So those are going to be coming up in March. We haven't finalized the next one with the store yet, so but it'll be coming up, and hopefully we can see you guys out there. Ran Mothership last time, had a great time doing that. Busted out the Legos and had the little micro figures out and um, worked really well. I got to say the way the little sort of like six by six or eight by eight or ten by ten. Uh, pieces of Legos, the little platforms work really well for trying to lay out uh, an impromptu fi- um, space station where you don't know where things are and whatnot. And it was a lot of fun, and it's really easy to pack up and take somewhere. So if you're running at a con, I think it's a perfect tool to use, and there's all kinds of little fiddly bits you can add to it and stuff. So it was a lot of fun. We had a great time with that. And you can see pictures of something similar that I did on Facebook because uh, I tri- I tested it out on our children before I took it to the game <laughs> store. <laughs> and it went really well, and we had a good time. So... The last announcement is is that Zine Quest has kind of inspired me uh, along with Patreon supporter Alan White and his project that is popping up on Kickstarter as we speak called Steam Hack is encouraged me to kind of get out there and do some zine, or some RPG zine projects and that kind of stuff. So I have one that I posted, uh, some previews and some pictures of it, and the idea behind it is also to one – Put some of the cool adventure ideas out there that we've came up with some of our, through some of our Creature Feature episodes, but also to partially improve the final product of Troubadours when it comes out. Because I've done, got a fair amount of layout experience, but never actually laid out a book before. So uh, kind of doing dual purpose, but I uh, just thought we'd send out some feelers out there and see if you guys had any interest in that. And if you did have interest, if there's anything specific that you would, would like to see from us in terms of games that we talk about and themes that we do. Right now, it looks like we've got a couple different OSR-ish Pathfinder-y, 5e style adventures coming out. Has anybody ever done a World of Darkness zine? Now that you're thinking about specific requests, I was like, I saw mm. uh, an occasional fate. I saw lots of, oh, a ton of OSR, some D&D, a little powered by the apocalypse. You know, I don't what think I, I didn't have. see was any World of Darkness. Some of that has to do with licensing, though, so I'm not sure how that would look. But I'm reasonably certain that we could probably put together a formalized version of how we put together a political RPG with the way we design our cities and structure them because Mm -hmm. that episode is really popular and I know I plug it a lot on Reddit and a lot of different forums that I get on and we get a lot of positive feedback on that because I don't build that like a tabletop game. That's how I build a LARP and I think that's what helps it shine in a tabletop game is that you have this very complicated political structure built up 
that is really what most World of Darkness is about. So that one, right. I guess we could do something along those lines maybe. But either way, if there's anything that you – if you have interest in it or anything that you would like to see from us, um, hit us up on Twitter or on Facebook or you can email, email me, James, at Just One More Fix, and let us know what you think. All right. So that's enough of that garbage. A lot of time spent in there with announcements. But – Today we're going to talk about sometimes you are having some struggles with creativity or inspiration or what you want to do. And fortunately now we have this magic space phone in our back pocket that has access to all of the information that humanity has ever known basically, right? So if you can't find inspiration in that, then you probably should just play games and take a break from running for a while. (laughs) But so what we're going to do today is talk about some things to Google that we have found have given us inspiration and different things for us to spark ideas to run games, basically, or maybe make characters or whatever. Any Anything that brings inspiration and the what we use on Google to do that, basically. I don't really use on Google. I guess I start with the web browser, but mine are all specific things I usually look at. It's not... Well, it's all good, but like... I do have one example we of can, just random Googleness, but... Right. Well, my thought also is maybe uh, you can just mention what you Googled to get there. As using, well, using the internet, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm gonna go first. So I'm gonna pop this up here. So these are these are at, we have our laptop open with two separate windows, so we can and we don't know what is either on each other's oh, do list. I have to close my eyes again. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. I'm just gonna pop it up right here. So my first one is just real easy. I just like to look it's at a dude on a horse. At that's my <laughs> desktop, but that's the Ulan, and that's a, a World War One German uh, cavalry. So my first one is just. Dark surrealism and Jeez. just the artwork that comes up when you do that. So just go to Google Images and type in dark surrealism. So it's no secret. I love surrealism. I love dark artwork. The imagery is very cool and it's it makes you think about things differently because they're not like regular paintings or regular pictures or anything. Mm-hmm. So that this brings a lot of just inspiration and ideas that come flooding into my mind when I look at these kind of pictures, right? Because there's nothing really like this. Most of them scary. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We run a lot of <laughs> horror games. Surprise, surprise, <laughs> right? In case you didn't know. So uh, if you're if you're at your on your phone or at a computer, just Google dark surrealism, and it should be it, you're should be looking exactly what we're looking at. So, like, what do you think? Mostly scary. Um, I could see this being super good for running a changeling game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously horror. That seems like the most common thing. But um, I don't know. I like to look at like the ones that have like sort of people in them. Yeah. Right. So like this lady. Like I feel like you could come up with a good story. This lady with the bird hat. <laughs> like what is going on here? What is her story? Why does she have a bird on her mm-hmm. head? <laughs> Is this a cult thing? She looks like she's growing feathers. Uh. <laughs> so for me, it works really good for games she's like... clearly Catholic. Right, yeah. Orpheus or Wraith or Vampire or anything that has like dreamlike qualities to it. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff. Anything horror-driven. In the pre-show we talked about Don't Rest Your Head. This is a lot of, a lot of stuff for that. Okay, so you're looking... Um, okay, so you sit down. You have no idea for what you're going to do this evening. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... What game are you running? I don't know. Don't think about it too hard. Just pick one. What games am I running right now? Okay, so I got Wraith. We just got Wraith, the Oblivion, or Inv- an Invisible Sun. So we'll just say we'll pick one of those two. Okay, so we'll Wraith, pull- right. you're running a game. You pull up this picture right here. Okay, tell me what you're doing with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're looking at a black and white picture of a youngish girl with, uh, she's got straight brunette hair and she has her head in a bird cage i'm pretty sure i uh i ran this as part of my bluebeard's bride scenario oh, yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. Last time. and there are three birds smallish birds like sparrow style birds they're kind of fluttering around her and she looks like she's uh mostly naked and covering up with some kind of a cloth yeah blanket or cloth something a thin a thin cloth or something so uh, what am I using this for for inspiration? So For Wraith. For Wraith. So, well, with Wraith, I think it's kind of interesting because you can look at this picture in one of two ways. One, you can look at it quite literally and say this is just a, a Wraith with this birdcage on her head and these you know birds fluttering around. And you can take it quite literally there. Or you can look at it and say it's more of a metaphorical thing. So uh, she has this birdcage over her head. So maybe she's trapped in her own mind. Mm-hmm. You know, locked in her own head. Maybe that's 
means that she isn't interacting with the real world, or maybe it's that she can't see the world around her correctly because she's so locked in her own head, right? And maybe these three birds, these three sparrows, um, well, you know, uh, maybe they they are more uh, a metaphor as well for three people who are trying to maybe being that this is a birdcage, maybe they're the ones that created the problem where she's kind of locked in her own head and can't see her way out of this problem. And they had something to do with that. And they have, they have, or maybe they were in the cage with her, but they have since then escaped and they're trying to, to rescue her from this. Right. And, and very clearly she looks pretty vulnerable. You know, her, her body language is closed off. She's covering herself up, trying, you know, trying to, um, protect herself. So whatever the situation is, it's not good. Right. And I think probably by the look of it, she knows it, but maybe she doesn't know how to see her way out of this problem yet. Right. So that's, and then, then what I would do is I, if I've already got a Wraith game going, then I would take this and develop this person into a more of a, a more flesh out NPC and then find a way to weave that into the story that I have. Or maybe this is a character that the, the players already know, but don't necessarily know a lot about. So they, they're familiar with the character by name. Maybe they're an mm-hmm. acquaintance. But now we can develop this character a little bit more and put them put her in front of them. And then they choose. Maybe maybe that they don't want her out of the cage. Maybe they do. And that's, that's a choice that they make in the game, right? Okay. So that's sort of cool. my process of things. And I like that because when you look at a regular painting or something that's more – that's not surreal, it's very – like, it, you don't have all these metaphors that you can just pull out of nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Because I can look at this picture and my mood might decide what I see in this. Whereas if you just look at, like, a Van Gogh of a picture of, like, the Café de Paris, it's just a street with people on it at a café. So there's not a lot to to draw on, you know, metaphorically for what all that kind of stuff could be. So that's why I, I prefer the, the surrealist stuff. Okay, cool. So that's where I come from. So that's a random one. I like that one. That's pretty cool. <laughs> may have to save that picture. So that's my first one. So Hit dark surrealism <laughs> and just uh, go to Google image search. And that's a theme that I have for a lot of these. So just if you think of any weird off terms, just type them into the into Google and then hit images and see what comes up, you know. But also be prepared for what that might mean <laughs> because sometimes that turns into a disaster. Yeah. So. Um, so can I say like looking at this? Yeah. Go for it. So I see this as an actual physical clue in a game because what I notice about the is that it looks like a picture that's been folded in half and well worn. Oh, yeah, I see that. And so what I see is a model posing in a piece of art. Okay. And so she's kind of vulnerable, yes. So that's in her posture and she's like covering up. But at the same time, she's posing partially nude. And she has a face that doesn't reflect that vulnerability. Mm -hmm. What I see in her face is like desire, not in a sexual sense, but like desire to be out like those birds free and outside of the cage. Um, And so I think this is something that someone is carrying around um, like a memento of, uh, Uh, okay. Of a past experience. So I I would give this as like an actual physical token to my players. So maybe like if you're, you know, doing some kind of investigative, like trail of Cthulhu game, you're like, okay, you find this folded up in the victim's wallet and see, see where that takes you from there. Right on. Very cool. I guess I'll stay on the surrealism thing because I mean, just a side mention. Maybe I'll do another one after this. But one of the Twitter things I follow, this is actually for a book that they put out, but I don't really care about that, um, is 41 Strange. Oh, yeah. And so I them as well. um, it's at 41 Strange. And so they post a variety of, I mean, most of the ones that catch my eye are surrealist uh, artwork. Yeah, they're very um, good. From different people. So you get a very similar feel of this, but I don't have to Google anything. Like it's just stuff that randomly pops up in the feed. Right. Uh, And then it's not always surrealist, but but a lot of it is. uh, And so it's all very kind of odd pieces of art every Uh time they post anything, no matter what it is. So um, that's my honorable mention there. (laughs) So neither of these have websites either. So I'm going to pull them up for you because they're ones I follow on Twitter as well. Um, but a different kind of thing. So the first one is called, uh, strange animals. Okay. And, uh, the other one is called nature is weird. Oh yeah. So if I need a good example of a weird creature that I want to pull into a game here, I'll pull up a good picture. Nature is weird. Kind of. Yeah. Nature is weird. And so they have all kinds of odd little. So we'll link to all these in the show notes. So this one is called a decorator crab. 
and he lives in the ocean and he just like picks up stuff and sticks it to himself in order to <laughs> camouflage into the background. Right on. It's kind of like there's an, 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 an anemone crab that carries an anemone around on its back for that same, that protection, you know, uh, not camouflage necessarily, but for protection. And really, like, I wouldn't use this to do anything abstract. Like, I would just use this to come up with interesting creatures because right. odds are there's some good inspiration to draw from in the actual environment of things that are just well, yeah. And then it also just gives strange. It gives the care, the creatures more life because that's while that crab is really weird or whatever. Everyone knows what a crab is, though. So you can draw on those elements of it and then kind of describe it through that crab. So here's like uh, an earth star fungus. And if that doesn't look like the head of the demigorgon from Stranger Things, oh, absolutely wow. nothing does. <laughs> Whoa. I can't give that some teeth. And <laughs> What's that called? An earth star fungus. Um, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> Earth star fungus. This is from the nature is weird one. But what I like about it is it tells you about weird adaptations too, where you're just like, oh, that's not right. So like, here's one. Um, a woodpecker's tongue is oh, so yeah. long that it wraps around its skull yeah. and helps protect its brain yeah. <laughs> from the force of the hammering that it does to extract insects. Because mm-hmm. the tongue isn't out when it's, when it's hammering. Yeah. It only comes out when it's done. That's Yeah, I knew that one. That's really cool though. So, well, it's kind of fun too because all those little factoids that you just read stuff like that, and you may not even know it right now, but it's just going to sit in the back of your brain somewhere and rattle around. And then one day, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, boop, here it comes, <laughs> you know, and then you have this really cool idea. And things like that are very fun because a lot of times, you know, you've got five minutes or something, and you're on the elevator, you're waiting for an appointment or whatever. And so, you open up your phone and you go to social media and you're just scrolling through. I don't know what the right word is, but, you know, nothing of any real significant importance, right? Yeah, you know, you're just, just wasting time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if you follow some of these really cool, uh, like 41 Strange and, and some of these nature ones or whatever, that, that scrolling through things can be a, a lot more productive. Uh, one, you get to learn cool, weird facts, uh, which, I don't know, I'm just like a purveyor of that. That's awesome. That's my jam. That's my superpower is uh, weird, weird facts and trivia. Uh, but also, you never know what's going to spark inspiration, or you may be stuck on some creatively on something, and then it just springs into your mind, oh, I did read that little blurb about that woodpecker, and that's kind of neat mm. and whatever, right? So it um, that's something that's cool that you can just do constantly, not I'm, I'm stuck. How do I get unstuck, right? Because you can still go to those places for that, but it's something you can just kind of add your normal repertoire of things that you look through. Right on. All right, so you want my next one? Yeah. So I already know, I know you know what this one oh, is. Sorry, you know. So this is in the very similar vein. It is, I'm going to say the butcher this name, but it's Zdyslaw Beksinski. And I've mentioned him on the podcast before. I think I know. He's the Polish guy, right? So he is a Polish surrealist. Yeah. But this guy <laughs> is on another level, right? So you Google, you, if you went and Googled dark surrealism, and that stuff is cool, and it's inspiring, and metaphor, and all that He's kind like of stuff. stuff of nightmares. But this guy, like, has seen into the bowels of hell or something, and is able yeah. to just make these paintings that are just sort of unreal I don't even know how to describe them sometimes. There's a couple of them that really are just disturbing, you know, and yeah, I don't the like coloring it. I don't like the, what is the one with the, like the long spindly it's, legs? It's, down, it's like, down oh, you don't have to touch screen. No, but no. That's crawling at you. I don't like him at all. Yeah. Down. So. Weirds me out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like the, and the, the thing is, is when you would, if you would describe how this makes you feel, a lot of people automatically think it's like got to be super gory. There he is right there. Yeah. It's got to be super gory or super explicit or something. And it's just not. It's just the imagery of it is very powerful. And what well, has to do some of it like with the coloring. Right. Right. So there's lots of like sickly yellows and greens mm-hmm. and kind of like orange, red and everything's kind of not sharp. Right. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know, like, what the art, I don't know art words, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not out of focus, but it's just, it's not perfectly blended, you right. know, either. And it also proportion, mm-hmm. like, the proportion of things is very odd, which right. gives it kind of but that it's, otherworldly. It's, it's close enough so you know what it is, mm-hmm. but off just enough to where your your brain knows those ratios for how people are supposed to be shaped. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, your head ratio, your your torso to, to arm length and that kind of stuff. And, but he also does a lot of landscape stuff, like sort of these really bizarre, surreal, hellish landscapes that are just strange. And 
what's the name of the the ghoul city? Ghoul Ghoulheim. I'm not sure. City of Ghouls. It, um, Neil Gaiman mentions it in the Graveyard Book, but it's not an idea that's like original to him. Right. I believe it's Ghoulheim. Okay. It's totally use this for uh, the Shadowlands and Wraith. Oh yeah, hundred percent. That's exactly what it makes me feel. It makes me think of what dreams may come. This right here, this but is. darker. So this is the <laughs> 1971. It says non Gretchen, <laughs> and it's this sort of smoothed out f- head. With his mouth open, with creatures, are they crawling in or out? You know, maybe a little <laughs> bit of both. Right. They're kind of humanish and also kind of spiderish. And there's this sort of like desolated city landscape in the background with this yellowish ochre haze across the sky. And yeah, it's just, I don't know how to describe it. It's just powerful to me, you know, and that imagery is just strong. And so... Like, I haven't exactly incorporated any of this stuff into my games, but I, I, when I'm trying to put myself in a space to make something terrifying and horrible or whatever, I like to scroll through images of things because it makes me think, right? And, I'm, you know, it changes the way I feel a little bit, and then it just produces this kind of thought process that leads me down this this avenue to get to to, to conjure up my, my horror inspiration, <laughs> basically, right? Get the horror juices flowing. Yeah, exa- that's exactly what it is. And... <laughs> I've looked at lots of different surreal artists and that kind of stuff, but like, there's no one that I have seen that does it quite like this uh, Zdyslaw uh, Beksinski does. So, all right. So, there's not much more to say about this one. I, I would just totally recommend um, googling um, this artist. Um, I'll put it in the show notes because it's a very Polish spelling, so it's like Z D Z. You know, there's a lot of. Uh, string of constants together. So I'll I'll put it in the show notes uh, along with all these things will be linked and you can just check them out and see what you think. So what's your next one? It's a surprise even for me. Uh-oh. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The Whores of Yore. What is that? So <laughs> it is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> so this is all about like explicit photographs, um, the indecent people of historical times, um, okay treatments for sexual things Mm -hmm. from history but it has some really good uh uh the words of the day are kind of funny but it's like old-timey words for inappropriate things (laughs) (laughs) but they have vintage erotica okay so if you're running a game that's in the like 1800s 1900s they have like vintage pictures that were erotic then right um and literature and things like that um they also have uh interesting articles But what I like is you get uh, a lot of interesting characters in here, too. So there's, like, historical figures and things like that that are basically people of ill repute, right? Right. (laughs) So they're a little bit more uh, interesting than what you might be coming up with on your own. Well, and we've talked about several times about how villainesses are sort of like a really, truly untapped group of or uh, archetype of, of bad guys and antagonists and that kind of stuff. And... Yeah, like I saw Lilith up there earlier and shit. Like that's a very archetypal one, you know, and has a lot of uh, World of Darkness significance and that kind of stuff. But it doesn't change the relevance and the inspiration that you can use from it at all. Yeah, so this article is called Powerful Women in Magical Vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> so you could imagine what game you would want to use that in. but <laughs> Vaginas are magic? Yeah, right. Um, if you're running a good, <laughs> good witch game and Lamentations. Right. It was so obviously there's, you know, sexual content involved here. So if that's not something you care to include, then don't go here. But, yeah, if you want some kind of more interesting uh, sexually progressive characters or if you want to read about terrible things that they did in order to try and treat sexually everything from sexually transmitted diseases to actual sexual orientation right. in, in history all of which are terrible well, and even if you don't incorporate the actual sexuality aspect into your games like a lot of influential women that wouldn't conform right to what uh time said a classic woman was supposed to be would probably be lumped into this group of people mm-hmm. and so in turn like we were mentioning the villainous thing there's a lot of uh people i'm sure that are on here that you can use uh bits and pieces of from several of them to put together really cool compelling villainesses and you can use or not as much of that sexuality as you want right and and 
at the same time, there's lots of time, things that you can sort of like fade to black on or, you know, sort of use innuendo or however you want to work right. at your table. But it, just because the inspiration comes from from this sort of a, a place doesn't mean that that's where it has to end up, right? Yeah. So. Anyway, um, it's not wanting to pull up right now, but the, the word of the day section um, makes me giggle, even if it's not necessarily perfectly useful for much. For gaming. You could, you could word <laughs> drop it in there, but your players right. probably would not even catch it. Well, and no, then, but it, um, it could be fun if you're running like a uh, Trail of Cthulhu game or something to use period slang terms or whatever, right? Because yeah. in those kind of games... Uh, it would be super fun to make a slang table for like right. 18th oh, yeah. century Definitely. slang table. And then like a lot of times in those kind of games, you're dealing with cultists or people that are kind of at the edges of society anyway. So you're you're kind of tangentially running into what would probably be a lot of these kind of people. And it, it just adds another le- layer of flavor and distinction to the game, right? And then what you can tell when they're talking to someone who's part of the aristocracy that they would not be – they don't use – that style of language or whatever, right? And it should be very apparent and it can draw a very definite distinction between the two types of characters or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Easily amused. Anyways, Victorian erotica, there you go. You're oh. welcome. <laughs> very cool. All right, so my next one is more images again, but in a different sort of sense. So they are from photographer Nicholas Bruno. And uh, he, so he's a fine art photographer, but he suffers from night terrors. So then he decided to stage photos that were inspired by his night terrors. I think, did we see, we saw these ones too. I feel like we talked about him on the podcast before. We may have, but it's been a long time. So I think it definitely bears mentioning again. But like some of them are very disturbing. And if you've had chronic nightmares or whatever, like I used to, I also also used to have night terrors. And I see him and I'm like, oh, that's exactly what that, I know exactly what that is. And... They're very well done. They're very evocative. Again, you could use them literally or metaphorically if you wanted to. Um, this one looks just like the guy in the hat from um, uh, Haunting of Hill House. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the you're right. big, long, tall legs because he's like mm-hmm. standing over you in the bowler right. hat. Just a shadow, really. <laughs> so uh, his name is, again, Nicholas Bruno. If you just search that, search his name, it'll bring up all these. Or you can put in Nicholas Bruno Photography, and it will bring them all up. And there's just a lot of really good sort of um, strange pictures. But the thing that's interesting about these is these aren't actual – these aren't paintings. So they're sort of surreal in the way that the scene is staged, but they're all actual photographs. So it, it changes the way you, you uh, sort of look at them. I like this one with the cannon and the guy tied to the chair. Mm-hmm. Yep. These would be cool for a murder investigation game, too. Like, if you had a serial killer, oh, you could yeah. definitely be like, okay, this is what the first victim, like this one with his target on his face uh, mm-hmm. at an archery range. And like, okay, so you get here, right. and there's this guy sitting here. <laughs> well, and like this sort of staged and posed uh, woman with- that might be a corpse in a field of mannequins mm-hmm. and stuff. Uh, this one with the anvil has a very seven feel to it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That would be wicked cool for that. So this is the end of my darkness, I guess. This is my horror inspiration. <laughs> Thank so goodness. you can see what I do at work when I'm <laughs> bored. <laughs> look at terrible pictures of things and you know You make my Victorian erotica look acceptable. <laughs> at least a lot less scary, right? <laughs> I find it comforting to know that people are not actually any weirder now than they were then. This is very true. You know true. what I mean? This like people true. like to think they're so edgy with like what they're into right. know, sometimes. <laughs> like listen. <laughs> We no. people have been doing the same thing for hundreds of years, <laughs> right? Because probably you know, like before there were cameras, still doing the yeah. same stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> we're still just people. <laughs> that hasn't changed, and also we're weird. Okay, so creative writing is a thing right. out there, right? So there are literally like hundreds of creative writing prompt generators. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like this one because you can look up random scenarios, random words. What is you can it? put in what if scenarios. So it's called writingexercises.co.uk. Um and it's just creative writing prompts. So I like to start with the what if scenario because <laughs> then you can kind of like, oh well what would I do with that? But you can also do random words. So uh-huh. let me I'll give you a, a random word. It generates eight random words. Uh-huh, so here okay. we go. Whole Terrify, tiny, dice, addle, dusty, pancake, and promote. 
And you have to use all of those to come up with something. <laughs> so uh, this is an RPG club for old people at a pancake dinner. <laughs> pancake breakfast, right? That's, that's It's a tiny pancake breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe it serves Silver tiny dollars. pancakes. Silver, Silver dollar pancakes. pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a, a breakfast, like a pancake breakfast benefit that they're doing. <laughs> you can also do a plot generator. So it'll give you a main character, a man in his early 20s who is very naive. Your secondary character is a man in his late 30s who is very mysterious. Your setting begins in a forest. Situation, an abandoned dog is given a home. Theme, it's a story about hatred. And character action, your character has some questions to answer. So there's the start (laughs) of your plot. Right. Put it together. And then the what if ones are kind of fun too. So what if scenario. You wake in the night and turn on the light, but it's not working. What are the possible reasons for this? (laughs) So if you truly have no idea at right. all where you want to start, <laughs> this is cool because you can go and it, it will just give you some ideas and generally well, that will spark other things off for you. That, right. And um, and it takes no there. time. So if you don't like that one, you just click it until you get something that either with that or the combination of a couple of them does generate some some inspiration in you. So. Right on. So my, I'm going to do mine that is almost the exact same thing as this. It's oh, just a little okay. bit more specific. So along the same lines of plot generators and that kind of stuff, I have a a, a, a metal lyrics generator. <laughs> oh my gosh, <that> is amazing. <laughs> Enraged and like a dime. So, He's half man and half meth. <laughs> that so, may be my favorite song theory that doesn't <laughs> exist ever. He's half man and half meth. <laughs> Well, it actually looks like they have taken. I've met some um, of those people. <laughs> ver- por- portions of verses from other songs because this section is from Master of Puppets. This one down on the very bottom is a Black Sabbath song, and then this one is, um, I believe, Alice in Chains. So it looks like they've taken several from different things and kind of mad libbed them together. But the fun <laughs> thing is, is that before you get to the before you do this one here, uh, hit the back arrow if you would please. Is that it has several blanks for you to fill things in. So it's possible that you it, you so like the first one is, is a song about a man or a woman. Uh, then you choose three adjectives and then three singular nouns. So these can all be things that come from your game, right? The, all the different choices you can you can put things in there from your game and just keep generating things until you get something that works for you, right? Oh, cause of death. There you go. Cause of death generator. <laughs> this NPC has died. Maud Sally Sparkle, that is a terrible name, 73 years of age. <laughs> Makes sense for Maud. Oh, wait, fill entire with random ideas. Why did it take me so long to find that button? Gregory Zach Smith, age 40 years, shape average. <laughs> Realism. Realistic. Oh. Hang on, click on the realism button, see what it brings up. Realistic or creative? Or cre- creative. Let's be creative. creative. Write me a death. <laughs> Probable age of death, 81. Suicide, driven mad by conspiracy theories around his friend Dakota's death. Other likely causes, eaten by a gingerbread person. (laughs) Heart attack caused by the stress of investigating Dakota's death. Killed at a protest that turned into a riot. Oh, look, Lacey. (laughs) Noteworthy funeral attendees. Lacey Lizzie Barnett, age 77. (laughs) Oh, that's fun, because this could be a total murder mystery thing right here. Done. Gives you like four. Oh, he's got three ex-boyfriends. Get it, Gregory. <laughs> round, round, get around. I get around. 82, 75, and 77. Oh, some dudes so with stamina. <laughs> Capricorn. Oh, oh he even tells you his level of education, political views. He, he's an 80-something-year-old right-wing gay dude. <laughs> this is fun. Sorry. Right your, on. Your death metal generator is cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted by sure. the random death sure. generator. Random death generator. <laughs> So along the same lines of random death generator is, or, and, you know, story generators and all this kind of stuff, my f- actual favorite one is this one right here, is the heavy metal song generator. So it will generate an album name and several songs to go Old on it. Man, Misery, Wrath, Chaos, Anguish. Is that the, the album that's title? The, that's the album. Oh. Yeah. And then the songs are Defeat Eternal. Nihilistic Suffering. <laughs> the Veil of Dignity. No fear, no light, nihilistic suffering, and Chapel of the Ghost. And that's the album cover there. Is that what that's supposed to yeah, be? A random that's what it's supposed to be. album cover. Yep. And so you can just keep hitting generate, generate, generate until you get something uh, that you like. And this one is from Metalizer uh, DK. 
But and how fun would it be like just as a random flavor text in your game to have like this super popular local metal band and like oh, right. actually give them albums? <laughs> <laughs> you could even make song lyrics. Yeah, exactly. Done. <laughs> so it's just a lot of fun and it's an easy way to just quickly quick click through some things and generate some ideas basically is what you're looking to do. So I could see that being totally irrelevant if you were doing like the crow, you know, because he's like in this band or whatever. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. So yeah, so right in the same vein as yours, so. All right, so I'm on my last one. I don't know how many you have left, but this one's my favorite, though. There is a podcast that I listen to. Um, They have a website, too, so I'm going to show you the website, and it has basically the same content, but it's by Popular Science Magazine. Okay. And basically, they take little snippets of things that the people working there found interesting but didn't have enough material to do an entire magazine article about. Oh, right on. That's fun. Uh, And it's called The Weirdest Thing I Learned This Week. (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> I already listened to this episode, but I'll tell you, uh, we'll give you like this example here of what uh, this fun one is here. The man eatingest tiger ever was cool. So Tigris, deadliest, presumed deadliest manhunter, but that's not actually the one that I thought was really funny because I've heard of man eating tigers before, right. right? Or lions, you know, either way. There's an area of India that tigers eat this so many people. India, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got brackish water, and they think that the water makes the tigers kind of extra irritable. And I can't remember the number, the actual this number. This is like a combination of encroachment on their natural territory. Yeah. Lack um, of protein. Lack of prey in the mm-hmm. area from is so that all what? that. N- no. Uh, hot air balloon riots. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Steampunk call, we have a plot. <laughs> what happened? Uh, so there's actually three that they talk about. Three hot air balloon riots. Three hot air balloons? <laughs> yes. How is that even a thing? Um, yeah. So uh, the they heck? found articles about them. But, uh, wow. And there was actually one death involved. Um, so there's that. Were the balloons in the air or were they on the ground? Um, one of them was like pulled down, I think, like it was hovering Uh near the ground. And so was, was pulled, (laughs) pulled down by the people. Um, yeah. (laughs) Wow. The, so, okay. So it says one, uh, that's outlined in a different article. Um, so the second, uh, is known as the great balloon riot. Uh, and it's like, I, I can't remember if was, it was that one or not, but it's like they landed at like a fair or something. <laughs> then there was like a fight between the person that owned the balloon and like some other people. Uh, well. Yeah. Okay. So the last one is where this like young boy died or whatever. And uh, describe, there's a, there's a court proceeding and everything that happens because this boy dies. <laughs> Basically a bunch of sailors pulled this balloon down and set it on fire. Oh my God. <laughs> You thought you were safe and you're dirigible. Ha! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good times were had by all. Um, that is nuts. So there's that one. And uh, there's other things that are even just like weirder. So there's Have that tiger that swim, this there? one from the last. What? This is the weirdest moment. Oh, the goat. No, no, no. Keep going oh, down. Oh, yeah. Keep going down. Randy Johnson. I saw this happen live. Oh, where he hit the bird with the baseball? Yeah, he hit a pigeon. Yeah. And he threw like 110 miles an hour and he just blasts his pigeon and it explodes in feathers. This one's talking about the, the guy who wanted to bring his goat to the World Series. Yeah, to the Chicago the Cubs. And they curse him. Yeah, yep. so. It, the goat curse the goat. Yeah, so they talk about like weird baseball. Curses and stuff. Curses and right. beliefs. Uh, right on. So what's his website? Let me find the. Um, or the weirdest it's thing popular science, then it's the weirdest thing uh, I learned this week. One of the ones. That was before is like glowing wounds from Civil War soldiers. Uh, so it's actually super interesting, right? So the Civil War happens and there's all this carnage uh-huh. and they're trying to get to people as quickly as they can to do surgeries and, and treat them medically. But there's just so many right. that they can't get to them fast enough. And so this one particular thing that they cite was in like early April. So it's still pretty cold outside and... 
there were all these people that were laying on the ground for probably like 48 hours almost in this cold, wet, muddy nastiness. Right. So this particular bacteria grew in their wounds that normally won't survive the human body temperature, but because they were a little bit hypothermic, oh, this bacteria grew wow. in their wounds and it made them glow, but it also... So it made the wound glow? Like yes. the bacteria glows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like a bioluminescence right. kind of thing. And, oh, uh, God. But it was actually a good thing. These people survived... No. The, they survived longer because this bacteria kept up other bacteria from growing that was actually oh, hospitable competing. to the right. human body and would have killed them. That's crazy. <laughs> so they died less from infection because they got this like special bacterial infection. Right on. That like competing bacteria. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. But yeah, glowing civil war wounds, like that's enough to kind of spark yeah. you off on some cool game ideas right. anyway. But yeah. so all kinds of good random stuff there. Plus it's in podcast form too. So you can listen to it while you're in the car, which is always a plus. <laughs> right on. All right, so my next one is almost in the same vein, kind of like a, a multiple thing. So mine is uh, Vintage History on Twitter, but it also comes up as Vintage News on, uh, I think it's vintage vintagenews.com. Vintage and they just have weird news stories, either <laughs> things that they discovered now or things that they've discovered back in the day. So the first one that comes up here is the bizarre plot to rescue Napoleon by exi- from exile by submarine right it's just <laughs> like awesome. what what is going on like century old anti-witch marks discovered in a cave in england so there's it's just loads of different articles that are just weird cool things and not all of them are particularly relevant to your game necessarily or to you know genre specific stuff but there's all, just all different kinds of things and different kinds of content all over the place some of these are really cool like the mysteries and meanings behind six fascinating sculptures so it's like got like hidden meanings for by benini that he put into some of his artwork and stuff and there's just lots of assorted awesomeness so this is one of those things that i just sort of randomly check it's in my twitter feed or whatever that comes up and i find random articles and i read them and they're kind of neat and you just never know what you're going to stumble on it's a true variety of almost anything so not everything is super relevant, but it's it's just fun. Ooh, symbols and meanings hidden in America's Victorian architecture. Fun little Illuminati sort of plot. Right. You have it in there. Well, and this works well for a lot of your games that are investigative because there's a lot of symbolism and things that we really don't necessarily know about today that were commonplace back then. This is a cool story. I've read this before, like not here, but how germ theory finally came to be accepted over popular superstitions, like how the extra work and experiments they had to go through to to prove Prove. to people that spontaneous generation was not what was actually happening (laughs) and things like that. Spontaneous generation is the most fun theory ever. (laughs) And it took so much work to disprove it Uh too, because it's actually hard to prove that something doesn't spring from nothing. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So spontaneous generation is a very fun theory. You should Google that if you want some fun times. Oh, before they understood science. Right on. Do you have any more or no? Uh, No, I would like to just like give random props to just blatant Google searches. So, for example, I had no idea what I was doing one day. Uh, when I was sitting down to do Tales from the Loop. and I, But I knew I wanted to do something with birds, uh, and I later found the adventure pre-made in the back of the book that had one anyway. But I started off, and I was like, okay, birds. Uh, so there's going to be dead birds. So then I just Googled, what happened to all the birds? <laughs> 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 Where have all the birds gone? <laughs> what happened to all the birds? Um, but you come up with, like, news articles and stuff or... Right. So then you're like, okay, well, this one sounds interesting. Why do sparrows disappear? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what happened there? Why did all, I think there was one too, like, why did all the birds die? I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but, but I had this interesting article about birds. Here we go. Uh, I, I Googled, why did, what, why did all the birds die? Uh, that's not exactly what I typed in, but anyway, why are birds falling from the sky was <laughs> the article <laughs> that came up. Okay. Um, and so then I started reading because of chickens is that the answer what was going on and right. there was like global warming stuff and then there was some other things anyway point being enter some random question vaguely to do with a single topic right. <laughs> that you're planning on including in your session and just see where that gets mm-hmm. you or um you could even see it with like weird news yep birds or you know whatever the topic that's, is that's exactly where i was gonna go so if you're running a world of darkness game or a contemporary game that happens in a city somewhere like maybe it's unknown armies or trail of cthulhu you just type in whatever the town is so like uh Terre Haute, weird history 
Terre Haute, occult history, Terre Haute, conspiracy, Terre, any any of these terms along with that city name, and it's going to bring up something for you to do. This is basically uh, the RPG version of Men in Black when they go and pull up the National Enquirer and all <laughs> of the things. Like, ah, the news. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right on. Well, I've got one last one, and it's very similar to your uh, kind of sciencey one there, is it's IFL Science. Oh, yeah. And it stands for uh, I effing love science. And they just have some of the funnest random articles. So, like, the other day, the one that caught my eye was the fact that they found a humpback whale corpse in the Amazon jungle. <laughs> and I thought, what in the world? And it it's just there. And they think it swam partially upriver. There was a flood. It died. And then it washed up and the water receded and left the body there. <laughs> and that's the best they've got. But I think it's totally way more plausible to invoke some kind of deep ones or Cthulhu's or something. To, Obviously, to it it's a hitchhiker's guide from the galaxy oh, situation. Done. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Did they find a potted plant there also? <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> It was the potted plant talking because <laughs> didn't it talk or whatever? <laughs> well, that they say is like the, the last something. thing that went through its mind was like, oh, who am I? What am I? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, this is odd. But and then they say like the odd thing was the, the, the last thing that went through the potted plant's mind was, oh, no, not again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been too long since I read or watched that. So but there's all kinds of cool stuff. And it's got they talk about um Modern science discoveries like stuff involving CRISPR, which is like just this one. a 12 year old built a working fusion nuclear yeah. reactor in his old playroom. <laughs> I want That's to know legit. more about that. It's terrifying. Kid. But there's lots of cool science stories, and this doesn't have to be necessarily modern, but you can use these kind of things to, uh, to call back, you know, like for, for uh, more fantasy older games, right? Mm -hmm. And especially the, the humpback whale one is awesome because. If you are playing in a game that's like in the 14th, 15th, 16th century or something like that, it's like there's a lot of here there be dragons moments, right? So this isn't a – it's a kraken basically, right? So here then all of a sudden whales. now uh, are they terrified because they think there's land krakens now? <laughs> you know, like are there are, – do they swim in the river? Do they burrow through the ground? Like how did this thing get here? Because they're probably not going to apply any kind of logic to it coming up the river a little bit. Then there's a flood. Then it died. Then it washed up and the water receded. It's way too logical for when you have, you know – it's obviously a sign from the gods. Right, exactly. What it's it means exactly is open to interpretation by your local shaman. <laughs> so there, it's just lots of fun articles. And then you're, you're, it's one of those moments where you get to learn something kind of weird and cool. And you never know what game you might be playing. And then it just sort of becomes relevant, right? So all these kind of like weird sciencey things you get, you get to learn. You learn some interesting terms that you can throw around, whether you use them correctly or not. doesn't really matter. And then it just sort of grows and develops from there. And it, it teaches you a new sort of repertoire to br to bring flavor into your games is what i have really found it does right on would you have anything else uh nope no nope. right. well i think we may make away. this a semi-regular thing where we do this once a season maybe for just random things we just discovered googling and and whatever because it is lots of fun so if you out there google any kind of weird things for inspiration uh hit us up on twitter or facebook uh let us know you can email me and we'll give you a shout out here on the show and and talk about uh the weirdness that everyone else has found because the internet is so wide open. There's just so much out there. There's just, there's no reason to not be inspired. Essentially, there's just too much, too much craziness out there. All right. Well, quick Gunna Geek promo for Gamer Life Balance Australia episode 77, The Weird Alien Doofus. This week, the boys do something very on brand and review the Nintendo DS game that's only available in Japan. Sega 3D Fu, Fukoku. Archives 3, The Final Stage, a sequel to the game known in the West as Sega 3D Classics Collection. It's a bunch of old Sega games that were given the 3D treatment. Also, in this jaw-dropping episode, AC has been sick, and Rob has a funny new house guest. Oh, and the quiz this week is a doozy. So you can check them out. That's Game Life Balance Australia on the Gunna Geek Network. So thanks for hanging out this week. And like I said, if you guys have any cool sources or, or Google searches to mention, Hit us up and let us know. You can find all the ones that we just mentioned in this episode in our show notes. So if you like what we do here, you can support us at Patreon and help support the show and help us grow. Big shout out and thank you to all of our Patreon supporters, Tiziano Furlano, Simon McNair, Alan White, and the OG Toddles. And 
So thank you for supporting the show, and I think that'll do it for us, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks for listening. This has been an episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at Incompetech.com. You can support us at Patreon.com slash Just One More Fix, or follow us on Twitter at Just One More Fix. 